Uh, thank you everybody for joining the session. I appreciate your interest and attention. Uh, before I start sharing slides and do the classic presentation gig, thought I'd give you a preview of what we're going to do together today. Um, first, we're going to set the stage and talk a little bit about engagement strategy. We're gonna paint a landscape of what is that strategy and why it's important. I know you came here to learn about volunteer journeys and increasing volunteer engagement and retention. And that strategy is really important for uh, ensuring that your volunteer engagement is successful. So we'll talk about the strategy and then we're going to do an exercise uh, that gets us all into a goals oriented mindset. So I'm not gonna make you do like a one minute plank or anything, but we are going to talk about goals and you'll have an opportunity to talk with a few of your peers in this session about uh, your organization's goals. When we come back from that breakout session, we will talk about the engagement pyramid. And that's where we're going to learn about the framework that sets up your second exercise. So you'll have two opportunities to work as a group and we're going to try and keep those groups the same. So who you get to know in your first session, uh, you'll be uh, back together uh, for the second one. All right, so let me shift things around here and share so that we can get started. And you don't need to look at me twice. So how about that poll? I know that uh, working from home or commuting to an office, it's been a really popular conversation for all the reasons we don't really wanna talk about today. Uh, and it was really interesting, maybe not surprising to know that over 85% of you, us, would like the hybrid model. We like to have choices. And sometimes we really need to be home for uh, flexibility reasons. Other times we wanna be in a collaborative space with our peers. So while that's an interesting question and something that a lot of us are talking about, you might be wondering what that happens to have, what does it have to do with volunteer engagement? Why that question? The reason I thought that question might be interesting is that it's a demonstration of the fact that we have different interests and preferences. And understanding your audience, you may have heard that in a marketing sense, but understanding your audience is very important to being able to deliver value to them. So knowing if someone really prefers working at home or commuting and working in an office and being collaborative is helpful in designing the right activities for them to participate in. Those environments are motivating and we all wanna be motivated. So the idea is understanding interests and preferences. Let's look at another example. In this case, uh, these images are demonstrating how people might like to work, not necessarily where. In this case, some people might have a preference for working in groups and doing uh, more community engagement. And other people might still prefer to work solo. They're self-motivators, self-starters, or they really prefer to go off and do their activity and um, just have a little bit of time. The risk is that we connect what we just saw in the first slide with this slide, that working from home means I wanna work alone, or that working in the office always means that I like working in a group. So the environment I work in may not always equate the uh, activities I like to do. I'm talking about preferences and interests because we can track this information. If we offer a variety of activities that not only are location-based, but the type of work or events, we can track who's showing up and we can start to learn what our volunteers prefer. And when I talk about offering a variety of activities, variety means everything from a one-time action to recurring shifts. You might have volunteer opportunities where someone can come once a month or even a few times a year. 
And then there's always the one-off option. Another way of thinking about variety is working on office-related tasks versus community-based activities. There's also, like we've already talked about, independent activities and group events. And don't forget leadership roles. Volunteers are not always playing a supporting role. We could engage volunteers to help lead. And that also means more than being on your board of directors or an advisory committee. Volunteers can be uh, team uh, champion volunteers, leading teams. Uh, they can be ambassadors for your organization. They can teach workshops. So having a variety of opportunities is really important to engagement. You can design that variety when you pay attention to how pe what people's preferences, interests, and motivations are. I'm going to now connect this to the overall engagement strategy. I did put that caution sign up that we needed to talk a little about the strategy before we dive into the volunteer journey. So when we talk about engagement, we're talking about all the different ways that members of your community, that your supporters can participate in the work of your organization. And they wanna participate because they share your goals. They also have a vision of the world that you have, and they're interested in creating that change with you. So engagement is about inviting people who help you achieve your vision to participate in ways that they prefer. What engagement strategy is not, is it's not a strategic plan. While they're both strategic, a strategic plan is about scale and scope of your organization. It's about your funding model, your revenue base. It's about staffing. It's about everything to do with who you are and where you want to go. Engagement strategy focuses on how to invite others to achieve some of the goals in your strategic plan. I get asked that question a lot, which is why I spent a moment differentiating engagement strategy and actual strategic planning. Both are very important. When you have a clear strategy in mind, when you start with the end goal, you know where you're heading. If you know where you're heading, you're more likely to get there in a fairly direct path. So engagement strategy starts with a clear vision. It's about have the engagement strategy guides your program design, it guides your messaging, it guides what kind of events you offer and how you plan them. It's everything to do with how you invite others to participate. So what makes up an engagement strategy? There's a lot of words on this slide and I like to sum them up in this way. I think of all of engagement as map, move, measure. We map a pathway of goals that lead to your vision. So mapping is represented in that top left quadrant where it says internal. We know what goals we need to hit. Imagine your milestones along the way. We're going to do work within our mission, all targeted to achieve the vision. So that's our map. Once we have a map, we can more easily move through it. So we want to invite supporters to move through meaningful experiences. And those experiences are what allow them to participate in your mission work. And they're participating, how? You could probably all recite it now, in ways they prefer, that interest them, and that motivate them. And they're doing that to help you achieve your goals. And all of this is, Need a, we need to measure that. And we use an engagement pyramid model to do that measurement. So measuring means tracking interactions, tracking different pieces of different data points, and then putting value on that data so that we can measure who wants to be involved and how much and doing what. So the measurement is where we'll spend the second half of our time together. This engagement pyramid, uh, well, we'll talk about it later, but if anyone was in the opening session this morning, James McKim really brought up a few um, relevant points that really relate to engagement strategy. Uh, he talked about, in the beginning, he talked about the uh, definition of belonging. 
I don't know if that touched everybody else the way it did me, but I was thinking about belonging and fitting in. And belonging for me is really when you feel accepted for who you are. And if you think about accepting people for who they are and what they have to offer, then you're really thinking about true engagement. When we engage our volunteers, I'm looking at what I wrote down from his session, they feel respected, they feel valued, they're invited, they feel they have a sense of purpose, they feel they have a clear role and responsibility, they feel recognized, and they feel that they share interests with others. And all of that is really critical. So engagement is really about delivering value to the supporters. So we just talked about why it's important, but having a strategy is important so that we know where we're heading. When we have that strategy in place, we're more likely to achieve our goals. We're getting pretty close to moving into a breakout room. So what I'm going to do is, now that we've talked a little bit about what is engagement strategy and why it's important, we're going to give you an example of getting into a goals-oriented mindset. This is called the goals map. So the map move measure model, when we map, we start with the vision. And the vision is your North Star. It's really where you're heading and we need to know how to get there. So think about this vision map as your GPS. We're not going to actually create a whole vision map, but what I'm sharing here is an example of uh, the beginnings of a map that I worked on with a nonprofit here in the Boston area. So um, BUILD, what they do is they are a mentoring program. They offer entrepreneurship training and mentoring for high school students. My goal for you all, the objective in your breakout rooms is to avoid talking about what you do. I'm just gonna let that sit for a second. We don't wanna talk about what we do. What we wanna do is we wanna talk about what we're trying to achieve. So the, that is generally described in your vision statement. I think it'll be very interesting for all of you later um, is to go to your even your own organization's website or your best friend's website and see if you can find the vision statement. I'm always really surprised at how rarely that happens. I might go to the About Us tab and click Vision, and what I read is something says, our mission statement is. So mission is all about what we do, and it's all about the work, which is, by the way, super important. It's how we achieve our vision. What I'm looking for you all to talk about is what you're trying to achieve. What is the change? What is the change in the world that your organization is set out to create? So back to build. In working with them, we are they already have a vision statement. So when, if I were working at build, I would say, well, what we envision is, we envision a world where all students, regardless of race, socioeconomic status, or neighborhood, develop skills and connections needed to achieve economic power and freedom. Right, that's what we're trying to achieve. The next question you might ask is, oh, how do you go about doing that? And then you can talk about what you do, all right? So the real key is if you find yourself using words that end in ing, you're not talking about vision, all right? If you use a lot of verbs when you're talking, you're not talking about vision. This is about outcome. So again, we're gonna go into the breakout rooms. I was thinking about, we said about eight minutes and we'll have about, we'll have five people in each room. And your objective is to introduce yourself, you know, who are you, maybe what your role is and the name of your organization and explain what your organization is working toward, not what your organization does. When we come back, if any brave souls would like to share out, we'd love to hear a little bit about your conversation. Again, our objective is you come back thinking goals. We want everyone thinking big and looking up. All right. 
So why don't we go ahead and set up those breakout rooms? Welcome back to the main room. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the house and that the rooms were clean. And I hope that while you were in those rooms, you had a chance to connect with each other a little bit and get your minds into that goals focused orientation. Uh, that was our objective. I'm curious if anybody, no obligation, is anybody is interested in sharing what's on your mind at this point, whether you have a question about what we've talked about so far, or if you would like to share anything that you heard or said yourselves while you're in your breakout rooms. So this is what we call a free for all. I, I suppose you could raise your hand. There's a lot of you, so feel free to unmute uh, and we'll see how this goes. And we'll just pause for a moment or two and see if anyone would like to share. Hi, my name is Elise. I'm uh, with an AmeriCorps program out of the Superior Court of Maricopa County in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, one of the challenges we're having with our program is recruiting volunteers. So um, in our breakout group, I got to meet Amber, who is um, in, I think, North Carolina and targeting a demographic that I can also target for my program. And she is not having the same challenges with recruitment of volunteers. So it was good to, to quickly learn that I can change and look at maybe a different demographic and not have as many challenges with recruiting. Well, I'm so glad that there was some strategic sharing in your group. It's make some new connections today. That's the theme, collaboration. Josh? Oh, um, thanks. I was just gonna share, you know, it's something that came up that in that for me, you know, it's it's one thing for me to be able to kind of as as a director of this organization to be able to kind of recite or share the vision. But I, you know, I'd be so curious if, if I ran this like exercise with our volunteers and kind of asked the same question and you know all the different kind of, you know answers you know that would come up. And so I was thinking about the difference between like and the opportunity of having a really clear shared goal and direction mm -hmm. while also honoring you know people's the many different things that people might get out of the journey there or something um so that was just what came up for me i'm beaming i beam when anybody shares but i really appreciate what you just uh, said josh i'll take a minute to reflect on it I tend to be a little bit rah-rah, I get all pep rally because I love, I didn't really even introduce myself earlier, sorry about that, but like I consult and I work with nonprofits and my vision is that nonprofit organizations that everyone working there who are so smart and working so hard can look up and remember why they're there. We all tend to get into our comfort zone and we're looking down, I'm at my keyboard and I'm checking off my to-do list. But when we look up, we can look around and see everyone who's involved in working with us and helping us do what? Achieve that goal. And so remembering why we are there is so motivating and sharing that why with everybody is wonderful. Start every staff meeting with why are we here today, right? Have it painted on, I think everyone's mural should be their vision statement. <laughs> so that's my, that's my rah-rah. Anybody else wanna share? <laughs> I feel like I would whip up a quick poll, which I won't, but I'm wondering how many of you could actually say your organization's vision statement. Don't answer it, just reflect. I wonder in our groups, how many could say their vision statement? And after this session, how many of you are gonna make sure that you can? Okay, we are gonna get back to the slides because I'm a consultant and this is a session and that is what we do. All right, so now we're in our goals-oriented mindset and with our eyes looking up at the big lofty vision and all the change that we wanna make in the world, we wanna think about how to engage others in work in traveling on that journey with us. 
This is the engagement pyramid. And we're gonna look at this in a couple of different formats. This one is, you might notice, has levels to it. It's also three-dimensional. This is representing, we're still talking about engagement. We haven't zeroed in tightly on volunteering necessarily. And that is because I believe there are no volunteers. I believe there are human beings who give their time. I believe there's human beings who share their knowledge. I believe there are human beings who donate money. When we use these labels, we tend to close our thinking down and we become uh, in a silo. And so the idea of the three-dimensional pyramid is to remember that they're humans, they're people, and they're wearing the hat of a donor or they're playing the role of a volunteer or they're performing as an advocate, they're joining your organization or a committee as a member, but that could all be the same person. So the journey you wanna create is full of different activities and actions and invitations and ways to participate that allow someone to move up the levels maybe hang out at that level, but do different things at that level. So the journey is about, again, paying attention to people's interests and knowing that if they're engaging with you, they share your goals. They want to achieve the same things that your organization has set out to do and to achieve. And we also know that just because somebody maybe is operating and engaging with your organization at a very high level, they can't stay there forever. Life happens. Personal situations change, people might move, their family structure changes, work demands might be heavier at different times of the year. So the idea is not for you to have as many people as possible at the top of your pyramid because then it would fall over. What you want is to have people interacting with you in ways that they prefer, you wanna meet them where they're at. So another way of looking at the pyramid is just like we got ourselves into a goals-oriented mindset, we wanna think about what are people thinking? What is their mindset when they are engaging with us? At this one, I'm gonna spend a moment talking through these levels. The, at the base of the pyramid, you can see it's wide. That represents how many, that there's more people at the base and then there's fewer and fewer as we get to the top. On the side, we can see that as we move up the pyramid or we move along it, we move from giving attention to giving time to giving money. Those things are increasing as we get to the top of the pyramid. We're giving more and more of those things, which is the same thing as saying, giving more of ourselves. So imagine a journey. At the base of the pyramid, there's some people out there who are aware of your organization. And awareness is usually things like they visit your website, they might receive your e-newsletter or read your social media posts. And in fact, they're aware of you and you may not yet be fully aware of them. You may not actually know who they are. They're over there observing. They didn't give you their name or their email address just yet. So you might be thinking, well, they're not really potential volunteer. They're not on a volunteer journey. The thing is they are. The volunteer journey starts before they volunteer. So how do we engage observers? We need to do something that catches their attention. So we wanna offer opportunities that bring someone in from being aware to really paying attention I said e-news earlier, that was, I misspoke. As someone who signs up for your e-newsletter has now given you their name and their email address. At least I hope they have, because if all you have are email addresses, you don't really know the person just yet. <laughs> uh, but when they give you their contact information, now you can interact with them one-on-one. -on -one. I call that authenticated. When, they when they're interacting with you, you have a way to know that it was Beth. So now they're paying attention. Well, now how do you, invite someone who's really only paying attention to show that they trust you and give you some of their time. I hope some of the gears are turning a little bit more smoothly now and you're thinking about all of the ways that you're inviting people to give their time because that's generally how we think about volunteering. Well, there's 
a lot of ways people can give time. And you'll notice that the level here that is named endorser and the level named contributor, they both have time. So what's the difference? Well, there's different kinds of time. I might, we talked about this earlier, I might come to a one, one time event and I might work your registration table. I gave you some of my time. If I come and uh, every month I volunteer in your food pantry, I'm giving you my time. That's a lot more time and it's a lot more hands-on in the mission. So you can think about how we evaluate time. When somebody is endorsing you or contributing, they're giving more of themselves. They show that they trust you, they believe in your mission, and therefore they're willing to give you more and more time. And they might even start uh, opening their wallet and writing a check or paying you on PayPal. No one writes checks anymore. As we get further up the pyramid, fewer and fewer people, fewer and fewer people will be available and willing to give you their knowledge and their skill. And in that case, those are the kinds of people who are um, maybe leading workshops, right? They're trainers. Uh, they, they might be serving on committees. They might be on your finance committee or your board of directors. These are people who are leading the organization with you because they not only believe in your mission and wanna help you achieve your vision, they're able to lead on their own without your direction. This was another uh, commonality between uh, this session and the opening keynote that James McKim shared with us. And he had a pyramid and it was, I could overlay it right here, where at the base of the pyramid, he was talking about, it was a volunteer pyramid. And at the base, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. At the base were things like events. Well, if you think about people who attend events, they might be a chaperone, work your registration table. Uh, that's paying attention and maybe giving a little time. Then he had a second layer where people can give their skills. Well, you can see that that's here too. People who might, um, come in and do some technology work for you or help with a marketing plan. They might do carpentry work. They might plant trees. They're giving you skill. And at the very top of his pyramid, the volunteer pyramid, he described it as service. And that is things like where you're, he said service is working alongside the practitioners. That is knowledge, skill, and leadership. So that's another way of thinking about what are the actions people can take that represent these mindsets. So you can see mindset is really important that we try and make an effort to understand our volunteer mindset and engage that in a way that helps you in, uh, achieve your goals. Okay, we're gonna be working on building your own pyramid because the pyramid is actually a journey. If you, I'm gonna back up one. Remember here, we said they might uh, be observing but how do we engage them to volunteer their time? We might also need to invite them to do some other activities. So volunteering is one channel. It's one face of the pyramid, but your volunteers are probably engaging in other ways. And it's important for you to know about that. Okay, so back to build. This is a snapshot of a pyramid that we started to build together at Build Boston, <laughs> we started to create. Uh, I've now taken it from being an actual pyramid shape to one of our favorite things in the whole world, an Excel spreadsheet. Because as much as we have CRM and volunteer databases and wonderful technology, I think we'll never be able to live without Excel. And you're gonna need to read this right to left. So as you can see, observer is the right-hand column, which was the base of our pyramid. And then we move people along. What we talked about is, and this is a template that we're going to be sharing with you all so that you can work with it. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to just talk through this example. The, this chart, this pyramid is uh, only a few examples of ways that volunteers could get involved with helping build achieve their vision, which you recall, Right? These, are, these are ways people can engage 
to help build, create that world where all students develop skills and, connect, and feel connected um, in order to achieve economic power and freedom. So what can people do to help build achieve that vision? Well, if they are following social media, they might see that there's an engagement information session being held and they might be interested in becoming a mentor. So from following the social media posts, they might then register and attend an info session. So they've just moved from being an observer to a follower. And after that info session, they, they may actually decide that they're so excited about this that they say, I'm gonna host one of those sessions at my company because I want everyone I work with to know about this wonderful work that Build is doing. Well, they just moved from being a follower to an endorser. And then they might have hosted that session, maybe they did, um, and some their coworkers came and they, they decide that they want to start volunteering at some of the workshops. So you can see that at the contributor level, BUILD offers the opportunity for people to review resumes and work one-on-one -on -one with high school students. They also give you the chance to facilitate one of their workshops. And this is happening over time. This is not necessarily that once you've done one thing, you immediately offer the next thing, right? You, you need to have some kind of a cadence, wanna pace these things out. What I'm hoping that you're seeing is there's a journey here. And to remember something I don't wanna to forget to share is that we wanna to listen to their response. So if someone has attended that info session and they're a follower, and then we end the session with, if you'd like to host one of these at your company, here's the contact information. The people who do not take advantage of that, you have not lost them. They've actually given you important information. A no is as important to notice as a yes. That person may be very comfortable being a follower for now. So what else can you offer them at that same level to keep them engaged? So engagement's not always about moving up, it's about retention and meeting them where they're at. So I would like to give you all an opportunity to work on your own pyramid. And let's see how we're doing. We have tons, oodles of time. Uh, what we're going to do, well, actually, I meant to pause earlier. Well, I guess we just did to see if anyone has some questions. So we are going to go into breakout rooms. We're going to put a link in the chat where you can download um, a template that looks like this. So yours will be blank, but it will have the levels the mindset and a definition of that level. This is going to be, I think it's like a Word document. It would be great if everyone downloads it individually because I would really like for you to have this to take back with you, right? This is yours to keep and uh, you're gonna be able to work with it uh, individually, but in your groups. So when you go in your breakout room, my hope is that you each have downloaded a copy of this and that you spend eight-ish minutes trying to fill in some of the ways people can engage with your organization at these different levels. You can work on it and just kind of put your head down and work on it. You can chat about it with each other, or you can do what Elise and uh, you know her group mate did and share ideas like, oh, I need some help with this retention problem I have. Anything that helps you. But do try to think about your vision and what people can do to participate in helping you achieve it. So I'm gonna pause, let people ask questions. We're gonna give you that chat link and then we're gonna put you in rooms. So how was it? Did we recreate a, a desert of pyramids? Do we have some really great wonders of the world to visit? I'll ease you back in by sharing that the slide we're looking at here that I hope you're looking at, uh, this one, the pyramid can take a lot of different formats I mentioned. And this one is sharing not only the level and the mindset of the participant, or in your case, you know, in our case, the volunteer, but what your goal is in engaging that individual. So when you're trying to invite observers to become followers, you're offering the value 
and secure permission for you to give and deliver direct communication. Then you're earning their trust. And then you're finding ways to deepen commitment to your mission. So that's your goal. That's your responsibility in creating these engagement opportunities. So your goal aligns with the mindset. So the activities you offer, right? you can think about them in different ways. I hope this conversation is helping you not only think about what you do today and at what level that volunteer may be engaging with you, but it might be spurring ideas on new ways that you can engage volunteers. You can create opportunities for people that you haven't even imagined. Um, I may not have mentioned it earlier, but as you think about the pyramid and building that journey, uh, and you're saying, oh, what else can we do? What else can we offer? Our vo volunteers are always asking if they can do more and we don't know what to offer them. Well, every time you plan a program or you're planning an event and you're doing all the work, you just miss an opportunity to engage a volunteer. So when you're designing a program or a workshop and your staff is saying, oh my God, I can't clone myself. We already have so much to do. Which one of these priorities am I supposed to table? You're missing opportunities. There's lots of people just waiting for that invitation to come in. So keep that in mind. Who would like to share a little bit about what you worked on? I'm going to pause, put myself on mute. And you can just unmute, shout it out, or raise your hand. I think we have a small enough group now we can see everyone at the same time. Did anyone put some actions on the on your pyramid? You can, vis, vis, well, you, if you have your video on, you could raise your hand or you could do the reaction thing. No one did it. All right, you're laughing. That means somebody did. Do I have to voluntold anybody? So Beth, this is uh, the other Josh here. And I would just say, I need more time to work on mine, sort of, I guess. And that might've been our group's takeaway a little bit was sort of like, in some instances, some of us may not be the right people. Mm -hmm. It might be fun to play with it, but in terms of like, depending each organizational structure, maybe have our board executive committee take a look at this, you know, and try to workshop this or do some sort of, you know, retreat and work on it. Um, but I'm going to have fun definitely drafting something together. Um, mm -hmm. But in some instances, it's this takes a lot more time and thought to put together for sure. I really appreciate you just said that because there's no way you build a pyramid in eight minutes, right? Uh, what do they say? Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, they, this whole engagement strategy is a lot of work and it's very much um, goals and visioning is very much board and leadership level work. Uh, filling in your pyramid is leadership and staff partnering together. The idea was to get those gears turning and the juices flowing or whatever the right metaphor is to get into the mindset of what are we offering today and what are we asking people to help us achieve? So if you're connecting some dots and you're having those kinds of ideas, two thumbs up. Who else? Anybody want to share what your experience was or if any light bulbs are going off on? Hi, so I'll share really quick. I'm with um, a commission that oversees AmeriCorps members. And so we don't actually work directly with um, volunteers. So it was a little hard for me to um, try to fill this out, but I did feel like this would be something really good to bring to our programs um, as they work both with volunteers and AmeriCorps members, and they could really look at it um, from both sides and see maybe where there's overlap or there's really specific things um, that they can, direct towards volunteers versus um, members. That's so interesting. Is it Michaela? Because mm -hmm. um, AmeriCorps are volunteers, right? They're committed to your organization for, believe it or not, I was, well, I was an AmeriCorps VISTA at one point. So nine months, right, of your life, you're volunteering. And, and if you think about an AmeriCorps uh, volunteer, what level are they operating at? If we're engaging our AmeriCorps volunteers down here as endorsers, we could probably be tapping into a lot more knowledge and skill. We might be able to re-envision the types of programming that we offer. And you might find that your AmeriCorps 
uh, list has a big long waiting list because your organization is so cool with the greatest opportunities. You know, think about it that way. Uh, and I appreciate you saying as well that it's something for a program to do because the engagement pyramid, again, is very much, I'm going to scroll, I'm going to do that thing, right? It's not about, there is no volunteer. There's a person who volunteers time, skill, knowledge. There's people who donate money. There's people who join boards and committees and associations, and there's people who advocate. They're all people. They engage in lots of ways. Volunteers are a huge contribution to the organization. That's why we're focusing on that. So I really appreciate thinking about your whole organization. I love the cross-functional kind of conversation. We all learn so much. Anybody else want to share back? Okay. Well, we're moving along and I said this is going to end pretty early. I might have paused long enough that it won't end all that early, but I am very much interested in conversation. So we're going to wrap up in a moment and I'm happy to hang out. I'd love to hear more questions and allow you all to talk with each other and with me or um, with our wonderful session hosts. So we're going to move towards wrapping things up a little bit with this is a summary statement. I am going to read it out loud uh, because that chart we had in the very beginning with all the components and the orange box and the green box and all that stuff, this is how it all works together. And I feel like if we read it slowly, it really sinks in. Your superpowers, which by the way, are not what make you great. They are what make you uniquely great. Superpowers are why people choose you over anything else that they could have chosen to do with their time or their money. Okay, footnote aside. Your superpowers articulate your unique value proposition and help build lasting relationships with the personas within your audience. You do this through programs that actively engage them in your mission, in achieving your goals, and in working to make your vision a reality. Your engagement pyramid provides the framework for what actions to measure with the right technology so you can target the right people with the right ask at the right time. That statement is what pulls it all together. An engagement strategy, again, is about developing relationships with the people who share your goals. It's not about roping every single person in in your entire community. It's finding the people who share your goals and engaging them in ways that interest them, motivate them, and play to their preferences. So what I hope you take away today, amongst maybe many other things, are these five, <laughs> that you really are thinking more and more about your volunteer interests, preferences, and motivations. That's the persona piece of engagement strategy. Uh, and then that you're designing opportunities for people to engage, to volunteer with you, with your vision in mind. Look up, look up and say, what is the change we're trying to make in the world? And what can people do to help us do that, achieve that? And remember volunteers engage at different levels and they will move up and down, down over time. Try to always have something to offer them to meet them where they're at today. No is not no forever. No is what else do you have for me? Okay. Tracking participation, that's the technology piece. Tracking participation is a way that helps you ensure that your opportunities are relevant. If you keep designing things and no one's showing up, you're, we're probably missing out on some of the components of this strategy. So we have a strategic framework, work within it, and you won't drive off the road. Create that map and follow it. But look up and create journeys that will increase volunteer engagement and have fun because that's what life's all about, having fun and achieving our goals. <laughs>